part two of chapter three, which includes the accounting cycle and the financial statements. And this is your first attempt at the financial statements. This is from Kisu's Intermediate Accounting 16th edition. First, we have four financial statements that are required under generally accepted accounting principles. The first is the income statement. It only includes revenues and expenses and it reports net income. Did the company earn any money? The next is the statement of retained earnings. This shows changes in retained earnings, which would include the beginning balance, plus any net income, minus any net loss, minus any dividends to get an ending balance, which then flows through to the next statement, that is the balance sheet, which reports assets, liabilities, and stockholders' equity. And of course, assets must equal liabilities and stockholders' equity. So this balance sheet should balance. And then the last we talk about is the statement of cash flow. We will not cover this right now, but we will cover it in future chapters. And this, what this does is explains the difference between the beginning cash and the ending cash. You look at what caused the change. The income statement have, there are two ways that we can present the income statement. And one is called a multi-step, and this is used by most companies if they make a product. If they're a service business, they will use the single step, because in order to do the multi-step, you must have cost of goods sold. So what does the format look like? Well, for the multi-step, we would list our sales. We would adjust for any returns, allowances, and discounts to get net sales. Then we would take out cost of goods sold to get gross profit, and then we would reduce it by selling, administrative expenses, we would get operating income, plus any gains or minus any losses, and then we would get income from continuing operations. We would, if we have nothing else, we would have income taxes, and then we'd have net income. Now the single step follows the same format when it comes to sales. We must show net sales. However, the next thing we would show would be any other income because what it does, the single step, is it includes all the income in one spot. And then it's reduced by all of the expenses. And that's how you get net income. Now, of course, you're still going to get the same number. However, the multi-step tends to be more informative. Now let's prepare a multi-step income statement. And the first thing we need to do is, this is an adjusted trial balance, which means that we've done all of our adjusting entries. And this is the second trial balance, and is the one that we use to prepare the financial statements. It is always presented normally in financial statement order. So what we would start with is the bottom part, which would be all of our revenue and expense accounts. So here's a summary of that information, and now we'll prepare our multi-step. We'll take sales, and we have no sales returns and allowances or sales discounts, so that is our sales. We're going to subtract cost of goods sold. We don't have any selling, so all we have administrative expenses, and we get income from operations. Then we're going to add in our interest revenue to get income before tax, subtract our income tax, and now we have net income, which is going to roll into the statement of retained earnings. So the next thing we're going to prepare is our statement of retained earnings. And the first thing we always do is look to see, do we have a beginning balance in retained earnings? Which we'll always have if, unless it's the first year of business. What are retained earnings? Prior years, profits and losses, minus any dividends paid out in previous years. So the information we need for the statement of retained earnings is the 
any balance, and any dividends. So what we would do is we'd start with our beginning balance plus the net income from the income statement minus the dividends, and now we have an ending balance in retained earnings of 123,200. Remember, this is always the number you use when you do the balance sheet, otherwise you won't balance. And a big mistake a lot of students make is they go through this process and then when they go to do the next statement, the balance sheet, they instead take the beginning balance of 100,000, which is not correct. All right, as part of the balance sheet, we like to do what we call a classified balance sheet, and the reason is that we do ratio analysis, and in order to do ratio analysis, we need to segregate out current assets and current liabilities. So current assets and current liabilities, that anything that is going to be happen within the next year or the operating cycle, whichever is longer. Now for long term, it is anything that's going to be held longer than one year or the operating cycle, whichever is longer. So we like to do that category because another thing we like to do with this information is figure out working capital, which is current assets minus current liabilities. Now we're going to go back and we're going to prepare a classified balance sheet. Now what do we need? Well, we need all of our assets and all of our liabilities and our equity account. We are also going to take our ending retained earnings balance for retained earnings from our statement of retained earnings. So here is how we do our classified balance sheet. Now I'm doing this side by side because it's hard to fit it on one PowerPoint unless I make it really small, but most, most cases the uh, balance sheet is assets on top followed by liabilities and equity. So remember, I'm only showing you the side by side because of the room issue. First, we start with assets. We would do our current assets, and that would include cash, accounts receivable, supplies, and inventory. Now, how do I know these are current assets? Well, common sense says that accounts receivable, normally people are not going to take more than a year to pay you, and if they are, it would be probably a notes receivable. And then, if it's going to be longer than a year, you would treat it as a long term. Supplies are consumed ongoing in inventory. It's very unlikely that you're going to keep an item in inventory for more than a year. If you do, though, you would treat that as long term. But you're going to assume that in most cases, unless you're a special case, like an example might be a jewelry store, or even a furniture store, you might have something like that. But in most cases, inventory is current. So now we have our total current assets. We're then going to do our non-current, which would include our property, plant, and equipment, less any accumulated depreciation. So we have our net equipment, and now we have a total of 248,200, which means that when we do our liabilities and equity, they must equal that number. So for liabilities, we would show current liabilities, and that's all we have, which is accounts payable. So that's our total liabilities. And then we would show our equity, we'd show our common stock, and again, our ending retained earnings, which is retained earnings adjusted for net income and dividends. And we now have our total liability and equity, which are the same. And again, these have to always equal, that's how you know. And as you can imagine, when this used to be done manually, this was a lot harder to do. Now the last thing we do, and this is only at the end of the year, what we have to do is transfer the balances in our nominal accounts to retained earnings. So normally this is a step-by-step -step process. We always start by zeroing out our revenue accounts. And in order, since revenue is a normally a credit balance, we would debit it and credit retained earnings. Expenses, normally a debit balance. So we would credit our expense accounts and debit retained earnings. 
And then lastly, we would zero out dividends, which have a debit balance, and we would credit dividends and debit retained earnings. Because again, expenses and dividends reduce retained earnings. So for our example, this, these are the accounts we have to zero out, which are all our temporary accounts. Our permanent accounts, which are balance sheet accounts, would not be zeroed out. So this is what our closing entries would look like. We'd zero out our sales, our interest revenue, and that would go to retained earnings. Then we would zero out our expense accounts, our cost of goods sold, all our various administrative expenses. We would not have an account called administrative expense. We would instead have multiple accounts like salary expense, rent expense, supplies expense, all types of accounts. In this case, we're just doing a summary, so we're saying it's administrative. But remember, you'd have to go back and zero out all those individual accounts. And then income tax expense. And then the debit would go to retained earnings. And then the last thing we do is zero out our dividends. Now, so far, we said the first thing we had was an unadjusted trial balance, which is run at the end of the month to see do our debits equal our credits and do our balances, our balances normal, and what accounts may need to be adjusted. Once we do adjusting entries to record any revenue or expenses that need to be recorded, then we do an adjusted trial balance, and that's what we use to prepare our financial statements. And then we do one more trial balance at, after we zero out our nominal accounts, and it's called a post-closing trial balance. And as you can see from this, it only lists our permanent accounts. And this ends chapter 